Um, Dave, what are what is what is it about rotary that specific thing that rotary that James Will Noon Rotary does that you feel? Um, I mean, you, you do so much. There's their cornrows. There's all these other things. Um, is there one that kind of you look forward to? Yeah, the, the cornrows. The course is our big fundraiser. That's where you generate about probably pretty close to forty thousand dollars of net income. That supports all the projects that we do. When we do scholarships, we support the Rotary Gardens, which is a, is you know a really nice venue here in Janesville. We support Camp Rotomer, which we've owned for years and years and years. We uh, do a lot of different things in the community, but we also have quite a bit of international outreach, as I said before. And about five years ago, we started sending money to Haiti to drill freshwater wells. And in the last, well, it's like, like 15 wells that we've drilled, drilled. Well, we've supported enough to drill more than 15. And we're we're working on number 20 right now. Wow. And uh, Bob Kimball and I have gone to Haiti a couple times to, to really get our hands on and see what's going on in Haiti. And it's it's life changing when you go down there and see what people don't have, and you see how much we do have. It's real easy to come home and try to raise more money to help those people. And then when the earthquake happened here in in January, then it was it was pretty heart wrenching to watch you know the disaster and destruction down there. And in in our own club, in about Ten days' time, we raised a fifteen thousand dollar chunk of money to send down there to help out. So, so we are, you know, we're we're not just focused on international, but for me, that's my 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 passion is to support the programs down there because people in Janesville, I guarantee you, have fresh water. I guarantee you, they have a place to sleep. I guarantee you, they usually have food and and you know basic necessities. But when you get out into the central plateau of Haiti, where we've been a couple times, they don't have anything really. I mean, there's no electricity, there's no running water, and there's no paved roads. But and the the thing isn't going to change there drastically, but the first thing you need to have is fresh water, and anybody would agree that without fresh water, you're not going to maintain any kind you're of. Not going to care health. about much of anything else. No, nope, you don't. And the people are so appreciative and so grateful for what we do that it's real easy to go back there. It's real easy. So even though you're a farmer in mm -hmm. La Prairie Township, it's it's the international angle sure. of rotary that really. One more little you. tidbit. A year ago, when I was down there, we planted some corn in Haiti. You know, when I was there in 2007, I saw that they grew the poorest looking crops ever. And after about two years they don't of research. No, <laughs> well, they don't have the right seed to begin with. And so after two years of research, I found a company that donated some corn for us to take down and replanted that a year ago. And it grew, it didn't grow as well as it would here, but it grew better than what they were growing there. So you, you got to start at the ground, you know, basics and start at, at the bottom and work from there up. So. I mean, there's a lot of improvement to, to build on, but it's we've got a good relationship with a lot of dependable, you know, honest people, and so we want to maintain that and improve what we're doing down there. It's, 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 that's my passion in our club is, is our support for the programs that we work with in Haiti. Jim, what, it, what, it, what is it about Elks that uh, clearly you said scholarships and its accent on the right. uh, emphasis on the education. Um, can anybody join as well? Anybody can join the Elks. Uh, there's a membership the process you go through, but everybody's welcome to join. Is there uh, so? Is there a specific uh, um, kind of going back a little bit? The specific activity that elks do because I don't know as much about elks as I probably uh, should. But there's so but many. I know now that, that turning my scholarship form. I know yeah. that <laughs> there are so many that we do. It, you know, it starts with uh, bike rodeo that we do in conjunction with the police department at Wilson School in June, I believe it is. We have a drug awareness trailer we take out. Uh, We've taken that to the National Night Out. We've had it here at the Friends of Riverside Park last year. We have a veterans program. The Elks have, have model, as long as there's an elk, veterans will never be forgotten. Uh, we do very well with the veterans. I think we could do better. This lodge could do better. I think Madison Lodge, of course, they have a veterans home. They do a lot better than we do in that, that respect. But. Uh, there are so many different programs that we have that we support that the members here say we are the best kept secret in Janesville because very few people really know what the Elks do. And with conjunction with these other organizations, I think we're all into giving dictionaries to the incoming third graders. So our goal is to make sure that every third grader gets a dictionary, which is theirs, and it's in two languages. And... Uh, I'm sure you guys do this. I know the Qantas do this, I think, do the dictionary program as well. So that's one program. That, that is kind of costly, time to get done. Uh, this year we got into some parochial and outlying districts. Uh, 
we'd like to cover the county if we can. That's a major, major project. So just because you're in Janesville doesn't mean that your your service stops at the city limits. Oh you're no, no, definitely go not. We go, well, we go wherever we're asked to go, and do whatever service we can do. So is is this the case with all the clubs? Anybody can join. You you know, do you have to be have a known that the secret handshake or you know, <laughs> or you, no? We can. It, you know, it's a simple. You know, and by all means, I mean jump in. We know? just have a simple membership form you fill out, and an application fee, and then the yearly dues, and uh, which is the case with everybody. Is, I'm mm -hmm. sure it's the case with everybody. The Rotary Club focuses on people that are at the the top of their profession. They don't have to be the president of the United States. But the, the, one of the the good things about Rotary is the members that we have can make a decision in a split second. If if you know they're not they don't have to go back to their company and say can we do this can we do this can we help this way. The members that sit around our tables at noon can make those decisions right now. That's that's how I raised fifteen thousand dollars in in ten days because they could make that decision without a whole lot of extra hoops and hurdles. But yes, we have many many people. There was a a while we didn't have women. That was quite a deal. I think about 1989 was when women were first admitted to Rotary, and that changed the the whole outlook of our club. And I think for certain for the better because we've got a lot more diversity. Women have different focuses than men do all the time, and it's it's good because there's a whole different range of people from you know lots of different walks of life. Every club is also responsible for maintaining a part of the of the city. Uh, the Lions Beach and the International Rotary Gardens are some of the most obvious examples. But there's plenty of opportunity for people to be involved, and if they want to, if they feel like there's a part of the community they want to be involved with, there's frequently a service club that is actually ready or ready to go. So there's, I, it's so wonderful to have representatives of all of these clubs here at the same time, because really the only other time when we all get together is at the, the annual breakfast that the service clubs hold. But I would think that there would be more opportunities for the clubs to work together because we all need more members. We all need to have more people joining because uh, clearly what every what, what the Elks and Rotary and Kiwanis and Lions do is good for the community. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of having more people know about the mission. Like Jim said, the Elks have the best hidden secret, you know, even though they're actually a fantastic golf course, but still. <laughs> so how do you think we can all um, we can uh, make that next step? And, and uh, are there other opportunities that you see for the clubs to work together other than just uh, an annual uh, time when we all meet? Well, I, I, um, we actually just met with the Golden K's uh, yesterday, um, and they're, they're actually a group of um, Kwanians who are, are more seasoned, I guess you would say. But they're not and seasoned for Kwanians, <laughs> they're golden. Okay. They're golden. And um, we have just been working on how can we come together to help one another with our missions. So that's a, a little start. So, so bringing our two clubs together. Sure. Um, it's, it's a matter of folks with the time. I think that is the most difficult piece that we struggle with right now. Um, with our Kiwanis Club, we are in the middle of making some pretty drastic changes. We actually had a, uh, took a Saturday where we um, had a strategic planning meeting to really look at our club and say what could we do to um, draw members in to really stick to our mission and be able to um, you know get the the busy professionals involved and so we're at an exciting time right now to um, you, you've changed you know you changed the venue you changed your meeting times you're changing a lot of things about how the club is run yes. because you're looking to make it more accessible and more inviting and more exactly. useful to the members exactly because of the time commitments right. we want to have that time available for folks to actually get out into the field and, and do that volunteer piece um, so if you have you know if you're booked up with all kinds of meetings to attend, then when is the time to actually get out and work together? And do the community service mm -hmm. that, you, that you want to do. Exactly.